remnant dropper open in either and as you can see it doesn't seem to want to show correctly so what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to see if we can define it as code press c convert to code and there we go we've got it showing correctly we're going to right click again and we're going to want to create function now we can see it in the graph mode to easily understand what's going on so let's go all the way to the bottom and as you can see it's quite simple to determine what's happening here it's jumping to this address here and if we try and convert this to code it will fail as you can see down here and this is because this is probably the encrypted code so what we're going to do is we're going to pretty much open it up immediately in xday 2 debug so let's go and open it through this way remnant dropper dot bin and we're going to go to the user code so what we want to do immediately is a breakpoint on virtual allocate because that will be what is the most important thing here because then we can get the executable before it's executed and let's scroll all the way down to the bottom see if we can find this jump anywhere maybe here for breakpoint some more calls so maybe not let's keep going all the way to the bottom and let's put a breakpoint there and there and let's just run okay so we hit this here and we're going to want to see what's going on here load library so we already know that this is a dropper so we can assume that it's creating a file or copying a file somewhere so let's put a breakpoint on create file a and a breakpoint on copy file a and let's run again Okay, so it's loading a DLL, importing different libraries, Let's see what happens. Let's open up Process Hacker as well, just in case we end up executing something that we don't want to. So it's continuously running. We've still got breakpoints on these API calls here, so now we're just waiting. Okay, and we can see it's hit the breakpoint on virtual allocate, so let's jump to user code, follow and dump, and run again. There's seemingly some more code in here so it looks like this is probably where it's being executed now jump to use code and yep it's definitely is executing in the same region of memory follow this and dump run again once again it's we can probably assume that it's executing from this region of memory here if we go to user code yep definitely executing from this region follow and dump run again and now it's calling copy file interestingly it's going to this looks like the file name it's going to be creating or copying to and it's being copied to the app data local folder so because it will probably execute it let's do a breakpoint create process internal w and we're going to run and we pick copy file again is it copying another file oh now it's copying it to the startup folder so upon restart this will execute so we're going to want to run again and continue and then it restarts so obviously the breakpoint on create process internal didn't trigger and it's restarted so what I'm going to do is because when we it was added to the startup folder so upon logging in you'll see it will probably have started up by now let's actually go into process hacker start as an admin so we can just immediately prevent it from running okay so let's select these here and delete them so now we know how it functions what we're going to do is because it's already copied itself to the roaming folder let's go into the roaming i think microsoft windows start menu programs and then we go into startup and select this here we can now put a breakpoint on the virtual allocate and just in case it copies the file again and create process internal w again so now if we run it will load the dlls again hopefully it doesn't restart check nothing's connecting out and we hit virtual allocate so right click follow and dump gonna run again okay similar thing as before right click follow and dump run again and do it one more time so now it calls copy file once again so what we're going to do is we're going to actually open that up now because we now know it's definitely copied so let's go to the 
temp folder and select this one. So now if we make sure the same breakpoints are set, so a breakpoint on create create process internal w breakpoint on virtual allocate and a breakpoint on copy file and run. See what happens. Assuming there's any checks to see if it's running from the temporary folder, it should hit the virtual allocate breakpoint much quicker, although it seems that the unpacking routine is just fairly slow. Okay, so we've hit virtual allocate, let's jump to user code, right click, follow and dump, run again, similar thing as before, right click, follow and dump, once again, and as you can see, we're now calling create process, calling SVC host, and SVC host is created as a suspended state, so we can now assume that it's basically using process injection or process hollowing, and it will actually inject it into SVC host. So what you can do then is actually extract it from SVC host and analyze it from there. So in this case, we can pretty much assume that we've unpacked the dropper, and we now know how this functions, and that will inject into SVC host. So now what we can do is we can move on to unpacking the VM protected binary. So let's move into that now.